What is going on everybody? In this video I want to take a look at the final drive between the grand final championship match of Skimbo and Problem. Now a little backstory here. Skimbo had just scored a touchdown to go up. You can see 24-20. Problem's got the ball. His own 28 yard line. 44 seconds left and three timeouts. So he's got a lot of time. Uh, three timeouts, 44 seconds is forever in Madden. So you're going to see Skimbo coming out first play in this dollar defense now he had been running dollar pretty much the entire tournament and it's a little bit of a different look he brought this linebacker up obviously wanting to play a little more conservatively because problem does have to go 72 yards to score a touchdown uh, but what skimbo really likes to do out of this dollar very consistently he'll go db fire two press and he'll blitz both corners so he'll have both corners he'll blitz all of his linemen so he rushes five and then basically he runs it stock he'll use her one linebacker and then the other linebacker say this guy might be in some type of like vertical hook but you he still has you know the two deep zones and then the soft squats on the outside corners that you can't see so that's the specific setup that he normally likes to run so you're gonna see early on in this drive as I go ahead and roll the gameplay footage Problem kind of takes advantage of this right here. He goes with a PA um, post shot type of play, or not PA post shot, but um, it's the PA a deep post like cross shot out of you know the gun Y trips that W made popular. This specific one isn't out of Y trips. It is out of a gun wing trio week out of the New Orleans Saints playbook, but same exact play concept, same routes pretty much. And you're gonna see right there. You can see. Uh, the five-man pressure coming in from Skimbo. You can see the soft squats on the outside. You see Skimbo using the middle. So he goes with the deep uh, crossing route, which is what most people will do. Right here, it looks like Skimbo went with a, instead of a second vertical hook over the middle, he went with a deep zone by his linebacker there. So he actually ran a three across, a three deep type of zone coverage. But Obviously, Skimbo running with the deep crossing route, so Problem does a good job here. Checks down to the in route by, I believe that is Chad Johnson. Gets with the rack catch, gets upfield, gets down, avoids the big hit, calls timeout. So perfect play right there from Problem, getting about 15, 16 yards to start off the drive there. So second or first and 10, second play of the drive here. So same exact look from Skimbo defensively, same you know, uh, dollar look. He brought linebacker back once again right here. So problem can probably be expecting a similar type of defensive style here from Skimbo. Snap the ball. You can see both corners coming. So the five-man pressure. Skimbo very aggressive with his user right here, almost kind of faking like a, a another blitzing defender trying to occupy that left guard perhaps. And it looks like it's working because it looks like this corner's definitely going to come off of the edge right here. You can look at problems, route combos. And kind of see what he was going for. It looks like some type of corner strike concept. Uh, out the backfield, you see a table route. This man's going to be on a C route. And on this side, it looks like you're going to have a C route, a streak. And it looks like problem went with a zig right here. So kind of a, he used the zig as a, the flat route option instead of a standard, you know, flat route or out route. But same concept at the end of the day. So you're going to see right here. Uh, he gets very aggressive. He reads the flat zone on the outside. You can see Skimbo's flat zone. Probably a soft squat. Could be a cloud flat as well. Um, but either way, soft squats and cloud flats going to play similarly in this scenario. They're both going to drop back and try and defend against that C route. Problem reads it perfectly. Ends up hitting Procise out the backfield on the table route. And gets the rat catch. Breaks a tackle. And then falls forward. Picks up about 12 yards right there. So another timeout. So now 31 seconds left. Problems across midfield at the 45 yard line and you're going to see a defensive change here from Skimbo for the first time all game he comes out in slant zone 2 and this is really the two play sequence I want to go over now Skimbo up to this tournament up to the Madden 17 championship tournament had been running almost nothing but slant zone 2 now when the Madden 17 championship tournament rolled around he switched to a much more dollar heavy style defense which was interesting to me that he went away from his slant zone 2 it was interesting that he ran slant zone 2 in the first place uh, because of the fact basically when you looked at all the top players who made this tournament he was really the only one who routinely ran slant zone 2 as his base defense leading up to the tournament everybody else pretty much ran dollar nickel so you saw some four six normal but that was basically it that was basically all you saw 
And so it was really interesting that uh, Skimbo, who was the number one ranked player going into this tournament, ran a defense that nobody else really run or really ran. So it's interesting nobody really kind of saw that it was working for Skimbo, obviously being ranked number one going into this tournament, and kind of hopped on the bandwagon with him to run that slant zone too. Uh, but finally you see him break it out with $100,000 on the line, up four against Problem, 31 seconds left, Problem marching down the field at the 45-yard line with one timeout left. He goes to the slant zone too. So Problem comes out gun tight, offset tight in, and you're going to see over the next two plays how this slant zone two um, works out really, really well for Skimbo. So right here, snap of the ball. Problem goes with the play fake, and immediately, a Skimbo goes super aggressive, sending six out of the slant zone, too. Uh, this guy came screaming through the B-gap, so it creates immediate pressure. Even though the running back picks him up, uh, he's so close and so in the face of Problem's quarterback uh, it just creates immediate pressure. You see this guy coming off the left edge, more of a delayed look, but he's definitely going to get in there. So uh, Problem's going to have to do something with the ball quick here. You see the same, pretty much the same setup as you saw from DB Fire 2 Press from Skimbo. You see the soft squats or cloud flats on the outside. You see two deep safeties, and then Skimbo really relying on himself uh, to use her the middle. But you can see Skimbo knows what to do. He knows he's got to run uh, to that seam route. He's got the B-side route covered. Uh, this route right here is going to be running a corner, so he's going to be covered. And so Problem actually makes the right read here and ends up checking down you know, to this drag route that's running over the middle of the field, which is really the only read he had. But you're going to see uh, Problem actually gets kind of a poor animation here. Julio doesn't turn straight up field, and Skimbo's defensive back ends up getting a fantastic block shed. He immediately uh, sheds his block, turns around, and ends up making the tackle on Julio, even though Landon Collins was there, holding Problem for, to a gain of three. So now Problem goes no huddle. He's only got one timeout left, so clock's ticking here all the way down to 18 seconds. Now when Problem's snapping the ball, you see Skimbo still in slant zone two. Same setup, send six. Problem looks like same play, basically. The only adjustment he made is instead of putting Julio on a drag this time, he went with an out route to kind of try and create uh, bench type of concept right here you're going to see problem go with a low pass option right there to Chad Johnson and he's not going to hold it hold on to the ball it looked like that was Mike Mitchell maybe uh, laid a huge hit and knocked the ball free so 15 seconds left now problem one time out and he is at the 42 so if you remember two plays ago problem was at the 45 yard line with 31 seconds left and so two plays later Skimbo went to slant zone two and then two plays later he milked 16 seconds and problem gained three yards. So now Skimbo in a much more comfortable position as he would have been if perhaps he would have stuck with that dollar, which problem was moving the ball very easily on him for the first two plays. I mean, he gained like 30 yards in two plays and then over the next two against land zone two, he only gained three. So that was a clutch adjustment from Skimbo, in my opinion, to break out that slant zone two. And it shows you how much, you know, um, faith and how how much he believed in that defense to to break it out. You know when a hundred thousand dollars is on the line. You know this is literally the the pinnacle of you know the bread drive, the game winning drive, and he he brought it out. So I thought that was really interesting. So now 15 seconds left. Palm actually plays this really well in my opinion. You see Skimbo basically telegraphing. He's in a man up three deep type of look. So Palm goes with the speed out on the sideline. Possession catch gets out of bounds to Julio. You're going to see now Problem run it to the opposite side. Uh, Skimbo tries to throw a cloud flat or a curl flat out there, but Joey Bosa just not quick enough to, to make it out there. So two good, really patient plays from Problem, in my opinion, there. So now you've got six seconds left uh, at the 21. So you've got some shots at the end zone. Right here, I actually think taking a shot at the end zone isn't your best move. I think Problem should have stayed with the patience. Now, he still has one timeout. You can't see it behind here, but he still has one timeout. Um, I think Problem could have... Definitely hit either the table route out the backfield, try and rat catch, get down, or get out of bounds. I would have probably just got down, called timeout. You might be at about, you know, between the 15 and the 10, and you get another shot. Or what you're going to see is this in route right here ends up breaking open. And that could have also been a decent option for him right there. If he would have thrown the in route, possession caught it, got down, called timeout, probably would have got timeout with, you know, one or two seconds. Instead, he tries to high point the post route. Uh, that basically was like uh, had six people around it so uh, now he's left one second left at the 21 goes with this gun tight offset tight end look 
and uh, actually tries to throw a, an aggressive catch to CJ Procise off the backfield, which was probably actually, it looks crazy, but it was probably his best bet. Everybody else was just completely blanketed. Procise was the only one who actually kind of had like a one-on-one -on -one situation, well, two-on-one -on -one situation on the outside, but either way, uh, the thing I wanted to point out was how Skimbo transitioned into that slant zone two defense and how much it helped him and played a crucial part in this drive problem easily marching down the field the first two plays and then skimbo goes to the slant zone two and it really slowed problems momentum and allowed skimbo to transition into a much more conservative style man up three deep type of defense and where problem just didn't have enough time to kind of march down the field anymore and had to start taking uh, some shots towards the end zone so really crucial and I think it's really interesting uh, kind of how that sequence of two plays developed but I hope you guys enjoyed this video comment let me know what you guys thought let me know what I can do better for future videos and until next time guys take it easy